Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why I say that because it's a video and I can't hear you reply. Oh, I'm I'm doing fine, Bentley. I'm thank you. But anyway, um, I guess by saying that it's more of a virtual teacher than a real teacher. But I, I try. So yeah, I can still ask you how are you doing. Hopefully that helps make you feel like we're ready to do some math pretty soon here. Because first things first, I mean, how you are doing is actually more important than uh, the math that we're doing, right? But anyway, let's uh, let's just look, let's just forge on ahead. <laughs> okay, so we're starting to talk about money in this course. Now, as far as money, uh, money always has to do with interest. Okay, and there's two kinds of interest that we're concerned about in this course. The first one, I'm not very concerned with because it's called simple interest and this interest is something that is not used very often in real life anymore but it's good to learn about simple interest so that it helps you appreciate what compound interest is because compound interest heck that's used all over the place this is one topic that is seriously important as far as uh, you know something that you'd learn in high school that you'll carry forth into your regular uh, to the regular world okay the real world if you will all right, so here is the simple interest formula. Because I told you I'm going to start with simple interest, okay? The formula looks like this. I stands for interest, and that equals the principal, which is just the money. So if you had 500 bucks, you'd do that. Now, between each of these variables or each of these symbols or letters is uh you have to assume that it's multiplication, okay? I didn't write a multiplication sign. I just put P R T. It's multiplying. Okay, so principal, let's say you had 500 bucks. Let's say the rate, which is R, was, let's say the rate was 5%. You would change that into a decimal, just like it says down here. So 0 0.05. And then you would times that by the time. And the time for this formula has to be in years. Okay, it has to be in years. So if someone told you uh, 12 months, then you would write a 1 here because that's what years are. If someone told you 24 months, you wouldn't write 24 here, you would write 2 because 24 months is 12 years. And uh, in fact, let me just give you another example. Let's say someone said uh, 18 months. Well, you can't write 18 here. So let's say they said 18 months. What you do is you divide by how many months are in a year. So you go 18 divided by 12. And if you do that, if you divide 18 divided by 12, you get 1.5. Okay? That is 1.5 years. And that, that is what you would write where time is. Because you're always writing in years. Okay? Let's just practice this. What if someone said, uh, let's say, 180 days. Well, if someone said 180 days, how would you change that into years? 180 days. Well, the trick is, is you just divide by however many days there are in a year. And then you've got your decimal. You've got your years. There's 365 days in a year. So you just go 180 divided by 365 and you end up getting, there it is, 0 0.49. I'm just going to keep it simple. 0 0.49. I just rounded it off. Okay. That is the number you would put right here. Okay. Should I do one more example just to make sure you got it? What if someone said mm, 104 weeks? What if someone said 104 weeks? Okay, what would you do? You want to convert that into years. Well, all you do is you divide. How many weeks are in a year? Well, there's 52. Okay, there's 52 weeks in a year. So you go 104 divided by 52, and you get 2. Okay, so that's 2 years, and that is the number you would put right here. Okay, so that's the only tricky part about this formula. You take the principal, which is the money, times the rate, which is the percent they give you, times the time, and the time has to be in years. I think you got it now, right? Okay, so let's try this out. The first question here, it says, Tiffany invested $3,000, so interest is equal to 
principal times rate times time. It's a good idea to start any question like this with the formula. It helps set it up. And then underneath the P is the principal. Well, that's just the money. Tiffany invested $3,000 at 14%. Okay, so we're going to times that by 14%. Change it into a decimal. Remember, it hops from here. It goes two points over to the left two places over so you get 0 0.14 and then you times that by time and be careful is the time in years here if it's not in years you're gonna have to convert it into years like we did on the previous page it is in years yay so let's do it on our calculator 3000 times 0.14 times 3 and you get 1260. Now that's just not any number, that's actually an important number. It's talking about how much interest uh, was made. Okay, so you look at the interest and you say I've got 1260 here. And then if you want to know what you actually have altogether, then you would take this amount, 3000, and you would add this amount. You would add them together and you'd say how much do you have altogether? Well, you've got four thousand two hundred and sixty dollars altogether if someone said how much interest did you make then you would point to this part here and say ah I've made twelve sixty in interest okay let's try another question oh well you know what we're keeping it really short here <laughs> just remember the questions are all the same the only thing that could change is if it wasn't in years you would say well if it said four 32 months if it said instead of three years if it said 32 months okay then all you would do is take 32 and you would divide by 12 and then you would come up with the number 32 divided by 12 would give you a decimal and that would be the number you would write right here where the years are okay now we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you uh, how simple interest can lead us into understanding what the heck compound interest is. Okay, well here's the situation. It's still Tiffany. She invested $3,000 at 14% interest for three years. Calculate her compound interest over that time using the table below. Okay, so it was three years. As you can see, our table has three years here. The principal's $3,000. That's how much we started with. Okay, now compound interest is a little different, and I think you'll like it. I think Tiffany's going to like it better too because she's going to make more money than simple interest. Just watch. Okay, do the calculation of the interest. Well, we just did that, right? 3,000. Oh, in this case, it's 14% interest. On the previous question, oh, it was too. Okay, 1260. That was for three years. Okay. We're going to see. We're going to see if the number here, uh, this 4260 that she has altogether, we're going to see if we make more money than that using compound interest. Okay, in one year, here it is: 3,000 times 0.14 times one year is 420. So how much do you have altogether? Well, the amount that you have is the principal, which is $3,000, plus the interest, which is 420. Okay, so 3,000 plus 420 is 3420. That's what she has after one year. Now with compound interest, the cool thing about compound interest is the next year you do not start with $3,000 again right here. You don't. You get to take what you have altogether, which is 3420, and you get to start the year off with 3420. Do you see how that's better than just having $3,000 at the start of every year? Compound interest takes this and compounds it. It says, we're going we're gonna to give you what you've already earned from the previous period, okay? The previous year in this case. All right, so 3420. You do simple interest on that, so 3420 times, again, 0 0.14 times another year, because we're doing another year here. We have $478.80. Put these two numbers together, and this is what we have. $3,898.80. That's looking all right. Okay, we're getting into the third year here. Do you remember what would be under here? Say it to yourself. Very good. You take this number right here, 3898.80, and put it right there. Then you do simple interest on it, so you go 
3898.80 times 0 0.14 times 1, and you end up getting this number, 545.83. Put these two numbers together to see how much you have after three years. $4,444.63. All right? Decent. So, how much more did Tiffany earn with compound interest rather than simple interest? Well, remember the compound interest gave us this much money, right? And the simple interest, if you remember way back here, the simple interest gave us, see that 4260 right there? It gave us that. And there it is. What's the difference between these two numbers? Well, she made $184.63 more with compound interest. Okay, it doesn't sound like a lot of money. You might be saying, well, compound interest doesn't really give you that much more. But wait till you see the following graph that I've made here. I used a spreadsheet, and it says down here, what if this, what if this situation, if we were to keep that money compounding, what if it was to continue for 25 years? All right, I'm going to open up a spreadsheet, and hopefully you can see this. Hmm. I got to make sure you can see this here. Um, let's see, I got to get that right in the field of view. That's per oh, come on, you can do it. There we go. Okay, so here it was. Here's the compound interest. Remember how it went up to 444.63 in three years? I have a spreadsheet here that shows us. Well, we're going to keep going 25 years, and you'll see how the money is growing, okay? You can look down there if you want. Just look at that money growing. Now, if you have simple interest over here on this side, simple interest, you do not compound the money. You just keep starting each year with $3,000. You earn the same amount of interest every year, $420, and it grows like this. This is how much you have, okay? So let's keep going all the way to 25 years. See that? After 25 years with compound interest, $79,000. Even more than that. See? If you're using simple interest, you have made $6,375 altogether. Okay? That is just not a lot of money compared to $79,000. Let's look at the graphs for these two situations. Look at the graph for the compound interest. Um, you've taken, if you're taking this course with me, you've already noticed that this is called uh, exponential growth. We're starting with our original amount of money, which I think was, what, what was it, $3,000, okay? And it exponentially grows very fast, okay? So this is a good unit that we're doing because we just finished doing exponents and exponential growth. That's what's going on here. But if you look over here at the simple interest, is this exponential growth? Definitely not. Is it quadratic? Definitely not. Is it linear? Indeed it is. It's linear growth, okay? So that's just growing at a steady rate the whole time, like a straight line, and that's where you get the word linear, okay? I hope that helps explain the difference between linear and compound interest a little bit here. And uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else on this sheet. Well, this is the last final words here. It says there's a formula for compound interest that will be explained in the next video. But just to show you how powerful it is, try this on your calculator. Okay, if you've just done exponents with me, then you know that, well, the $3,000 is your original amount. And over here, if you put 1 plus 0 0.14, that's going to be 1.14, which is called a growth decimal. It's going to grow exponentially. We already saw that on the, on the spreadsheet. And the 25 is talking about the 25 years. Okay? If you type that in your calculator, you're going to get it immediately, $79,385.75. You will get that answer right away. You will not have to do all of this work. You will not have to do all of this work to get that answer. Okay? You will be able to get to the 79,000 immediately with this really cool formula right here. And we're going to talk about it in the next unit. Okay? Um, are you excited to learn this now or what? All right. Uh, compound interest and the formula that is used is next.